But I like the electrostatic thing. That's probably why my hair is sticking up, right? <laughs> Anyhow, enough of that. We're going to start right now our service to all of you here and those watching on social media or on Zoom our, with our opening chant, Blessing to the World. that you've joined us in person and on Facebook and Zoom. Now, be, please be sure, everybody everywhere, to silence your phones so we can absorb the messages better. Okay. Thank you. So, now, let us turn within for prayer. As Ram Dass said, let us be here now. In this now place, my love grows and blossoms. I carry this place with me wherever I go. It's impossible to leave it behind. When I focus on being here, I connect with my source, and my life is healed once more. My issues and concerns shrink down, down, and down until they're gone. In this now place, I know that I am a part of God, and I have a unique way to express God. I know that this is why I am here. I no longer stand in the way of this expression. I break the silence I have created. I know this expression spreads love to all of creation. Today, I let all resistance drop away and allow the flood of knowledge and health and joy and peace of mind fill me from head to toe. <sighs> Feels really good. I speak this word for all who care to listen, all who want this experience with me. I feel gratitude, gratitude, and more gratitude for this intention and for all the inspired words of Dr. Mark grounding us here. And so now I release my word into the absolute mind of God, confident. It is already so. It's so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So now let's sing Joy and Peace in My Heart. Joy and peace in my heart, always I feel joy and peace in my mind, God within revealed joy and peace in my life, I am healed. I am one with God, I know the truth. to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. So if your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
shadow of my soul I've screamed into the wind and lost my voice I face the silence deep within And when the drama starts again I know I always have a choice Welcome. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, that's for later. Save that. Okay. And uh, now I'm here. So I'm talking about a book called The Fourfold Way by Angelus Arian. She was a cultural anthropologist up in the Bay Area. And what she has done is she has studied uh, the indigenous cultures, the first land-based people on each continent, and found that there were tremendous commonalities and similarities. Um, so now our teaching, uh, to Science of Mind, we always say is a teaching and healing philosophy. And so today, I'm gonna to talk about the way of the healer. Last week was the way of the warrior slash leader. And so Ernest Holmes says this, that there is nothing to heal, only God to reveal. There is nothing to heal, only God to reveal. So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you had something to heal, and did you take a moment to say, okay, there's nothing to heal here. There's only God to reveal, that's hard. It is really hard, you know, and I think the only way to do that is, is, is to go inward, that we have to journey inward. There's nothing to heal, only God to reveal. That's an absolute spiritual truth. So the absolute spiritual truth, when we talk about absolute spiritual truth, that's like the uptown truth, okay? Uh, the absolute is the elevated, most ultimate, truthful, you get it, okay? Concern with the relative, though, is more downtown. That's more of a downtown kind of consciousness. And so for this, we want to consider the uptown truth, you know, the uptown consciousness. So last week uh, was the warrior leader archetype from Angelus Arian's book on the Fourfold Way. Uh, 
indigenous cultures support change and healing and transition and rites of passage through mythic structures and through the incorporation into daily life of art and science and music and ritual and drama. You know, like, like I said last week, and I think this is a, a wonderful thing just to notice and appreciate, that every culture on the face of the earth seems to have singing and dancing, mm -hmm, storytelling, and probably also silence in there. So virtually all shamanic traditions from all around the globe draw on the power of these four archetypes. And I say most, this is mostly, okay? It's not everyone. But there's the warrior leader, there's the healer, there's the visionary and the teacher. And each archetype draws on the deepest mythic roots of humanity. Uh, Cross-culturally, there are many different perspectives from indigenous people on each continent regarding directions and seasons. So it's all a little bit different, but however, the majority view them this way. Okay? So the way of the healer. The direction for the healer is south, just in case you were wondering, and the element is the earth itself. The human resource for healing, or the healer, is love. So that comes as no surprise at all, does it? And the component of the fourfold way is to pay attention. The healing salve is storytelling. The instrument is the drum. Now the drum, indigenous people believe, is very much connected to or linked with our heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You know, and the season is spring. So there's all of that, right? So the healer is a universal mythic structure that all human beings experience. We all experience all of these, right? So the healer supports the principle of paying attention. Now listen to this because this is the important part. It's about paying attention to what has heart and meaning. And so this is the first thing I would ask us to think about this morning. What is it for me that personally, really for me, deep down has heart and meaning in my life? And I know that will be different for everybody, but I think it's really important for each of us individually to be able to answer that question. What has heart and meaning for me? So if we let ourselves ask that, if we let ourselves ask that, something will, will emerge, something will come forward. Healers in all traditions recognize the power of love. Isn't that extraordinary? All over the world, in all traditions, healers recognize the power of love as the most important healing force available to humanity. So Angela Sarian talks about what she calls the arms of love. And that to be that healing consciousness, we must be able to extend what she calls the arms of love. And these are what they are, and I think they're incredible. She says, the arms of love are acknowledgement. So don't we all love to be acknowledged? Don't we feel good when we've been acknowledged? Absolutely. You know, just acknowledged as, oh my God, you're such a good friend, or thank you for this. You know, it, acknowledgement is important. We all get lifted up when we get acknowledged. And I believe, at the same token, we also get lifted up when we are acknowledging other people. The next one is acceptance. That's the second arm of love is acceptance. Doesn't it feel wonderful to be accepted by other people? You know, it, it, the difference is when somebody wants to change you a little bit. And we all know how that feels, don't we? It's not so good. It's like, you know, you just need to back off and stop trying to change me. <laughs> This is who I am. So, you know, just, it's profound. It's powerful to just have nothing in our heart but acceptance for another person. To recognize other people, to recognize who they are, their contribution to our life, or just that they're here. To be recognized is hugely important. The fourth arm of love is validation. And we all want that, don't we? We all want to be validated, to know that we're, we're good, we're doing something right. We're on the path. And the last arm of love is simple. We've all heard it. It's gratitude. You know, you just can't express enough gratitude, I think, on the spiritual path. So healers in any tradition, I think, are skilled in, in acknowledgement. You know, they recognize the greatest remorse is love unexpressed. I mean, think about it. If we have regret about anything, I suspect, and I'm not a fan of regret because I think regret keeps us tied to unconsciousness, you know, but the regret that might be one that really gets our attention is remorse um, 
for the love that we have not expressed, that we know we could have, but for whatever reason, we justified holding back. We justified pulling it in a little bit. You know? So many native cultures believe that the heart is the bridge between the Father Sky and Mother Earth. So think about that. The heart chakra is right in the middle, three above, three below. Sky, Earth, yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm good with that. And so for these traditions, for these traditions that see um, the heart as the bridge between sky and earth, they describe the heart as four-chambered. And so now listen to these, because this is very interesting, I think. We can ask ourselves, is my heart full? Is my heart open? Is my heart clear? Is my heart strong? And so what I've been practicing with is daily I've been checking in with, am I full-hearted? Hmm, so what's not, what's, if I'm not full-hearted, where am I? I'm probably half-hearted, or even less than that, quarter-hearted. I mean, you know, but, I mean, but my heart, you know, we know when our heart's not in something, right? As opposed to when our heart is really in something. The next chamber, am I open-hearted? Well, if I'm not open-hearted, what does that mean? I'm closed-hearted. And I know that nothing good comes to us when our heart is closed. It's, it's, we are not in our own personal power. We are not in the flow of manifesting greater life and love and peace and joy in the world if, if we're not open-hearted. The third one is to be, am I clear-hearted? And I would say that if I'm not clear-hearted, then I must be doubting or I must be confused in some way. In which point, well, I always think about Ernest Holmes where he said, if I had only one treatment to do, I would treat for clarity because clarity always indicates its own action. And I love that, you know, to be really clear-hearted. And the fourth one is, am I strong-hearted? You know, do I have the courage to stand by my convictions? Do I have the courage to stand by what I believe in and what I know is important to me? Or do I lack that courage? And do I want to do anything about those? So if I ask myself, am I full-hearted, open-hearted, clear-hearted, and strong-hearted? And if the answer is no in any of those, is there something I want to do about that? Because maintaining the health of our four-chambered heart allows us to explore and open to the next thing I want to talk about, which are the six kinds of universal love. So if you were wondering about all the different kinds of love, here they are. Love between mates and lovers. All right, we all understand that. Love between parent and child, the second type of universal love. Love between colleagues and friends is the third. The fourth one is professional love. So this could be between a student and a teacher, maybe a therapist and a client, something like that. The fifth type of universal love is self-love, often the hardest for people to get a grasp on. And the sixth one is unconditional or spiritual love. So all these kinds of love are doorways to greater healing, right? Ideas toward, uh, they're ideas toward having a more balanced view of healing. I think if we're undeveloped in any of these concepts, we'll find that the door to love and health is often closed to us, okay? Be and why this is important, why this is relevant, is because Ernest Holmes teaches this concept of there's only one life. This life, this life right here, right now, this life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life. Right? So we are living the one perfect life right now. So healing is a lifelong journey toward wholeness. Right? Healing also is remembering what has been forgotten. It's about connection. It's about unity. Healing is about interdependence among all living things. Healing also is about the willingness to embrace what is most feared. You say, well, how, how could I possibly do that? Because I know, you know that God within you is greater than any external circumstance or condition that we might find ourselves in. Um, so we said healing is embracing what is most feared. Healing is opening what has been closed, softening what has been hardened into an obstruction. You know, where we just are unwilling, where we are absolutely inflexible. Maybe nobody here. I could be the only one. I really could. But um, 
But I think where our heart is hardened that way, you know, no good's going to come from that. Healing is entering into the transcendent, timeless moment when one experiences the divine. So this is what we're after every time we sit down to meditate, every time we sit down to treat. This is our goal, that we want to have a greater experience of the reality of the divine presence that's everywhere, but also, most importantly, within us. Healing is creating, crea sorry, is creativity and passion and love. So there's something to look at in our life, like, okay, do I have some creativity in my life? Do I have some passion in my life? Is there love in my life? And if not, what do I want to do about these things? See, because healing is also expressing the self that we are in its fullness. It's light and it's shadow and it's male and it's female, it's yin, it's yang. And healing is learning to trust life. One of my very favorite lines in the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes says, when we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. My very first Science of Mind textbook, I highlighted that in like four different colors until I couldn't read it anymore. I had to write it in the margin. And, and that has stayed with me the, all of my decades in this teaching, that when we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. So empowerment tools of the healer, well, you know, if we think about what we do in Science of Mind, well, we meditate, we pray, we study, we serve, we tithe, we practice gratitude, we do forgiveness. We have a lot. Ernest Holmes brought a lot to the table for us to move forward with our lives. But the universal four healing solves would be quite different than what we're doing in that storytelling is considered in indigenous cultures a healing solve, as is singing, as is dancing, as is silence. So without these, we, the indigenous people believe that we experience soul loss. So I'm not going to ask anybody to raise your hands, but just think about that. When was the last time you really enjoyed either someone telling you a story or you telling a story? Hmm? When was the last time you really enjoyed singing, whether you were receiving singing from someone else or joining in singing with them. And I'm just not talking about happy birthday, although it counts. It absolutely counts. How about dancing, you know, and the silence? See, the, it's, they say that the great spirit must have loved stories because he made a lot of people. And you know, one thing you realize is everybody, everybody has a story, don't we? Yeah, and it's wonderful. It's a, it's a terrific, terrific thing. So I want to go back to the singing, though, because this one I think is, is a good one. What songs do you sing that empower you? What songs do you sing that make you feel good when you're feeling bad? I don't want you to, to know the songs that make you feel worse when you're feeling bad. Because we all know those, you know, those put my head in the microwave song. No, that's no, no, no good. No good is going to come from that, right? But what songs lift me up? You know, I, 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 I very often love to chant, um, God's the love that I am. I mean, I've been using that for 30 years. And I love it, it because every time I do, it lifts me up. Or we sing, I am so blessed here when we do our time of contribution. I do that every day. You know, you are the face of God. I like to do that when I'm driving. It calms me down, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, because I've decided that my car is actually an ashram on wheels. <laughs> because this is where so much very sincere spiritual practice happens for me. <laughs> It's true. This is true. I'm very sincere in my practice at home, but you know, when I get out on the road, um, there are all these other consciousnesses there. Did you know, have you noticed that? You know, and, and they're not all doing what you want them to do. And so it's just a much better way. It's, um, it's a saner way. Uh, do you dance like nobody's watching? You know, uh, like your life depended upon it. I mean, you know, I don't know, we have such stuff on dancing in our culture, and I think it's crazy, because cultures all over the world have danced since the beginning of time. And I would also want to ask, how are you with spending time in the silence? See, it's, I will tell you honestly, it's taken me a while to become a friend of the silence. Mother Teresa said, God is a friend of silence. And, and so it's taken me years to learn to be able to appreciate that, to be fed from it. Um, I used to be somebody who, when I woke up in the morning, now this is years ago, I wanted to turn on the TV or the radio. I needed there to be signs of life and noise around me. 
And I realized as I started to meditate that the reason I always did that was because I was uncomfortable <laughs> with my own thoughts with an extended period of silence. Now I'm not anymore. So now I'm really good about, you know, if I come home and nobody's there and there's no external noise going on, I'm really good with that. I crave it now. You know? They say that the test of an extrovert is if you are fed by being with a group of people. If you are fed, if you get energy by being with people, you are an extrovert, so they say. And you know they. But if you are fed by being alone, by time in the silence, then you're more of an introvert. And I suspect we're all combinations of both to some extent. You know, we're somewhere, it's a spectrum, and, and, and we're somewhere on that, you know, that I know that I love being with people. It is my favorite thing in the world to do. But after I've been with people, I also really am nourished by being quiet, by, by sitting quietly, by meditating, by just having some reflective time, or doing a little reading, and then just sitting and thinking about it and being with it. Um, it's not just your meditation time is what I'm trying to say. It's that if you have to have external stimulus, it may be that the silence is not as good a friend as it could be to you. So uh, before we go into prayer, I'll end with a quote by <laughs> Isadora Duncan, who was a great pioneer of modern dance in America. And she said this, she said, all that is necessary to make the world a better place is to love to love as Christ loved, to love as Buddha loved. So Eastman Isadora Duncan got it. So I would just ask us to take a moment now to close our eyes and turn our attention inward. Bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing for a moment. And just notice I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out. And allow yourself to just be completely and fully present with this moment of an in-breath and an out-breath. And so we recognize that there is one, one spirit, one God, one power, one principle, one life, one love, one first cause, one essence of all that is. And I call it God. And today, for each and every one of us, I claim healing of anything that stands between us and total well-being in our life, whatever that might be. I claim the healing power, the healing presence, the healing light, the healing love of the loving universal mind as each of our divine right here and now. Today I claim healing in all of our affairs, in all of our relations, in all of our relationships. I claim healing on the conscious and subconscious levels of mind. I claim healing in our total being. Oh, why not? I claim healing of everything in the past. And I claim healing for our future. So we expand our circle to include all of those that we love and hold near and dear. And we boldly dare to claim healing for them. I claim healing for the world that we live in. So knowing what's happening all around us, we let an energy of light and love and God's good and God's grace emanate out from us to touch those situations and those people on the world who are most affected right now by seeming discord. I acknowledge and I accept and I acclaim that I of my own self can do nothing that it truly is the Father, Mother, God within each of us that's doing the work. And so right now I know and I affirm and I claim that the healing power of life, of light and love is filling us, is surrounding us, is showering down upon us and all is well in our mind, in our body, in our spirit, in our life, in our body of affairs, in the world that we live in. There is nothing that emanates out from us that is contrary to healing, that is contrary to love. So for these next few moments, just be love and let it emanate out from you, healing whoever, whatever needs it. 
the love of God that is within us is the most true, real thing about us. And again, I know for each of us that all is well in our mind, in our body, in our body of affairs, our relationships. And for this and so much more, I know we are incredibly grateful. As we are grateful that our word of blessing blesses churches and synagogues, mosques and temples, ashrams, everywhere on the face of the earth. We are blessed by being together. We are raised up in consciousness and we are open to the blessings of the infinite good that God is. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it is done. And so it is, and so we let it be. Together we all say, Amen. All right. We'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. 
lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. Then I think of God, and the world's all right with me. Just one thought of God. And I know it's gonna be, gonna be Song one more time. Lovely day, 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 lovely day. Thank you for singing along, guys. Appreciate it. I'm taking a group to Japan, and I hope that you will come with. Now, we're taking a very small group to Japan. It's a tiny country. No, I'm just kidding. And, uh, but the type of trip we're doing, it's going to be a small group. So if you are interested, there's this flyer here. It says, Spirit of Japan. And our focus is going to be the Heart, heart Sutra from Buddhism that we'll be doing. We're going to go chant with monks, and we're going to visit temples and gardens. And I think it's going to be terrific. So if this speaks to you, we're going in October. October. Oh my god, I just channeled my former self with a Massachusetts accent. We're going in October, uh, and I hope you will think about joining us. Thank you. Patricia, it's your turn. Yay! Boy, that sounds like fun, <laughs> especially without a mask. Um, uh, well, it's a new era. Um, thank you so much, Darius. You were wonderful. <laughs> You can get his music on iTunes. I want to thank you, Sam and Karen. Yeah. Anyway, if this is the first time at our church, we're delighted you're here. Please stop by the welcome table <laughs> on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. I quit. Um, for all the ways you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service, in person, and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, just switch over to Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen on February the 9th. The meditation begins at 6.50 and the service is at 7. Her topic this week is Season for Nonviolence, Inner and Outer Freedom. Youth Church is open on Sundays for a 945 service. We welcome youth of all ages. The Grief Support Group is on Zoom. This group is facilitated by Carol Winokur, and it meets today at 1 o'clock on Zoom, and you can find the address on the website. Foundational class with Dr. Mark Vieira starts this Tuesday, February 15th on Zoom only. Now this is a great class. You can't afford to miss it and live a good life. I mean, it fills you up. All the, uh, the talk about self-love and love for others, it just, it, 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 it blossoms so much. It's like an explosion. You got to come if you haven't been. Anyway, 
of what I'm supposed to read says, this 14-week life-changing class is the first in a series of Centers for Spiritual Living sponsored core curriculum courses and is open to everyone. Students undertake their first formalized step in understanding the church philosophy and teaching based on prayer, meditation, affirmation, and spiritual mind treatment. Just go ahead and sign up. All right, you can sign up online on the website. The annual meeting is Sunday, February 27th at 1130. The annual meeting is for members of the North Hollywood Church and will be held in person and on Zoom. The Zoom link is the same link used for our Sunday and Wednesday services and can be found on the website. We look forward to seeing you there. Um, we would like everyone to join us in consciousness that we will be able to return to two services on Sunday, March the 6th. <laughs> we will continue on Zoom and Facebook Live, but only for the 945 service, so don't look for it at 1130. And yes, we will have our junior church at the 945 service only. There is a Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation is every Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And so now please rise as we and join in with the peace song.